2009 marked the 10th anniversary of SpongeBob SquarePants. Nickelodeon found many different ways to celebrate, and the episode Truth or Square came out to mark the occasion. Another way they celebrated was by releasing a short Flash game on Nick.com every week. The grand majority were created by the company's This Is Pop and Workin' Man. Now, throughout the 2000s, most SpongeBob games were made by Sarbakken, who continued to stick around, but in 2009, a few other companies made a good share of them as well. Aside from the anniversary games, many others were released this year, so they're also worth looking into. If you're interested in seeing the anniversary games, check out this other video of mine. There are a lot of them, but let's keep making our way through 2009. To start, this one is called Bags Away, developed by Workin' Man. Look at Plankton's eye. Gotta give credit for the creativity, and the slightly 3D title font. So you're thrown right into this, and SpongeBob is crawling on the floor of a bus. Plankton bangs on the window, and stuff begins to fall on you. Now you must avoid the falling luggage and collect coins while the most intense music plays in the background. At the start of every round, Plankton will bang on the window again before unleashing another swarm. I like seeing all the different fish in the background too. At one point I saw a whole row of Freds. The animation is also really good and I like all the details they included, like these little Patricks when you get hit. Though sometimes Plankton can be blocked during the cutscene, which can have some comedic value. Though I will say, this game feels a little sinister. The intense music, the abruptness of how it throws you into the situation, and the lack of context makes it kinda uncanny. Not to mention the intro and game over scenes of Old Man Walker shivering in fear. Again, not bad, but very menacing. It's very true to how it feels to take public transportation. Another beloved working man game is Sandy's Shrubbery Shakedown. You're Sandy in a tree, and you need your nuts. Using a slingshot, you fling rocks at acorns to knock them down in as few moves as possible, so you have to coordinate your path to hit as many acorns at once as you can. You can even get special combos and work around obstacles. This is really fun and can really keep you occupied. It was so popular that it actually received a sequel in 2012. I guess all that can be said is... That's nuts. Working Man also made jigsaw puzzles in collaboration with Nickelodeon Magazine. It featured scenes from some of their Spongebob comics. I used to have my fair share of these and always used to enjoy reading them. Unfortunately, ironic as it is, the magazine actually ended in 2009. I guess I had to go out with a bang. It did later come back in 2015, but it only ran for a year. So let's see how this game went. You choose easy, medium, or hard, then drag pieces of a puzzle together while Gary moves across the table and leaves slime everywhere. Then your pieces can get stuck. It isn't exactly hard, especially because you can just keep hitting the edge pieces at the sides until they stick somewhere, but I like it. Jigsaw puzzles are fun. But if it does get really hard, you can click the autosolve button. Hey, look at that. I solved it. But let's pause from working man for now. While we're in 2009, I have to take a moment to mention a tragic story. A tragedy that rivals even the glitching of the Lava King. This year, we were gifted with an incredible thing called Nickelodeon Game Builder, which had a Spongebob version. You could build your own levels and even play through ones created by other people. It featured music from different Spongebob Flash games and a selection of characters to play as. You could get really creative with how you made these stages too. It was so much fun and one of the games I spent most of my time on Nick.com playing. But it went down in 2013, and to this day, it has yet to be fully recovered. That means this legendary creation has become lost media. It really is a shame because of how much fun it was. This is one game I really hope they're able to recover. Stuff like this always seems to happen to the best ones. Maybe we'll meet again someday, Game Builder. But until then, we have to move on. Another lost piece of media was a collab Spongebob did with Frigo. Yeah, the cheese company. It was part of back-to-school marketing, because as you know, you can't go back to school without your cheese. The company Illustra ran the Spongebob Animation Celebration Sweepstakes, which featured games and quizzes on the Frigo website that were advertised through Nickelodeon Magazine and on bags of string cheese. Cheese wrappers would contain trivia, and one game looked to be called Spongebob's Ocean Adventure. I like how this is worded on Illustra's website, too. 259,423 SpongeBob games were played online. 
Wow, that's even more Spongebob games than they made for the anniversary. There weren't even that many Spongebob Flash games. I should make a video on all of them at once if they ever get recovered. I'm sure it just means how many times they were played, but the wording is funny. And another lost event was Celebrating 10 Years of Happy, which had games and quizzes sponsored by Walmart. It lasted a good few weeks, but I don't think it had 259,423 games of its own. So let's get back to the usual ones. So aside from Workin' Man, the other company that made a ton of anniversary games was This Is Pop, one of Nick.com's favorite companies to hire. This is Demolition Sponge, one that was slightly more complicated than anything they made for the anniversary. We start with a foreboding cutscene. So Spongebob has decided the only way to solve his jellyfish problem is to initiate all-out war. You run through a desolated jellyfish field shooting bubbles at countless jellyfish. And since this is a This Is Pop game, you can expect the music to be great. Power-ups, you can really unleash hell on these jellyfish with your bubble guns. SpongeBob is not to be messed with. Just look at his face. He's a cold-blooded killer. As you can see, we also have a day counter. Our war is never-ending. But every so often, the screen will turn red and king or queen jellyfish will come in. It's a boss fight. This game is good, but it still keeps with This Is Pop's usual simplistic style. But now let's turn our attention to a company that wasn't a usual face on Nick.com. Soak and Squeeze was created by Smirk, spelled like this, and sent a strong message about keeping the environment clean. Listen to this music. <laughs> Filth is spilling everywhere, and as a sponge, it's your job to clean it all. You do this by dismembering yourself to soak it all up. You can only divide yourself into four pieces at a time, so manage spills carefully. You turn green once you soak a spill up, so you have to wring yourself out. You must be whole to wring out. Oh, guess I'll never be able to wring out. I haven't felt whole in a long time. Between levels, you also get facts about the environment. Smirk really cared about this message because this wasn't the only environmental game they made. They also made Pollution Solution for Penguins of Madagascar and Cafeteria Recyclorama for iCarly. But the real challenge comes when Patrick shows up in the later stages. He wants to talk to you and ruin your environmental cleanup. And because you click to tell Spongebob where to run, it's hard to avoid him because Spongebob will often take a path that he happens to be walking down. Sometimes he can completely corner you. If you lose a round, you lose a life. If you lose three, it's game over. Later stages transition through different environments, and the muck gets harder to soak up. But this game is okay. Sure, the mechanics are a little flimsy, but it isn't too hard, so it doesn't affect the general gameplay too much. You can find some enjoyment in this one. But now let's look at a couple games that were made for a special episode. In April, we saw the release of SpongeBob vs. The Big One. Inspired by the episode, Smashing Ideas made a game by the same name. We get an ominous intro that tells us about this giant wave. Then you choose a surfboard and have to ride it. You do tricks, avoid obstacles, and try not to get wiped out. You can fly to the top of the wave while holding the spacebar and pressing the arrow keys to pull off some sick moves. But when the planets align, get ready for the big one. Oh yeah. By the way, I'm terrible at this game. One thing that makes it difficult is that it's a little hard to reposition yourself when you come back down. The game is similar to To The Ed's Stream, one of my favorite Flash games, but that one was a little easier when it came to the controls. This one's just a matter of getting used to. It's alright, but a challenge. Another game that came out to celebrate Spongebob vs. The Big One was Goo Lagoon Surfing Showdown. It didn't have a listed developer. You can play as either Spongebob or Patrick in a surfing competition, and the instructions page is hilarious nowadays. 
If you select the surfing tab, it just says play again. If you select the unlocking one, the whole game freezes. I guess they don't want you unlocking anything. But once you choose a character, you pick three moves from a selection of them. Each are worth a different amount of points, and you can unlock more as you play. Then you're thrown into a rhythm game where you hit jellyfish as they reach a bar at the bottom of the screen. You fill a meter, then you hit the up arrow to pull off a move. It's cool to mess around in, but there isn't much to it. Just a simple little thing you can try out. And you know, all this surfing is making me wonder if I could actually surf in real life. I've never really given it a try. Oh, there's Bikini Bottom. But speaking of Goo Lagoon, Smashing Ideas also released the race to Goo Lagoon. Not related to the big one. Playing as either Spongebob or Patrick, you move across a board to reach the end before the other one. You spin a wheel and move the designated number of spaces. With every space you land on, you might get points, or something a little sillier might occur. Usually minigames. I love this one where you eat Krabby Patties. You also might get pushed forward or backwards. It's a very short and sweet game, but a charming one. It's a much less frustrating version of Monopoly. Maybe if my child self played this instead, they wouldn't have thrown the board in anger. But Smashing Ideas was on top of their game this year. They released some of their best works by a long shot. One of them was Hot Sand Hustle. Listen to the music. So you're on the beach and the sand is hot, but Patrick desires an ice cream. So you must endure the scorching sand to reach the ice cream stand. Otherwise you burn to death. Wow, imagine you're trying to enjoy your day at the beach and some clown starts running around on fire before being turned to ashes. Now your whole summer's ruined. But there's a catch. You need money. You can stand in water and on towels to cool your burning feet, but you have to walk around the obstacles to collect coins before you can buy the ice cream. Then once you get it, you have to hurry back before it melts. And each round, Patrick gives a clever reason for why you need to buy him another one. Love how Spongebob just complies. I mean, I'd be lenient too if the beach just spawned coins and gave me an unlimited supply of money. Maybe they're the Flying Dutchman's bus tokens. But I really enjoy this one. It's a blast to play through. It's one of my favorites by Smashing Ideas, so let's see what else they have. This is Camping Chaos, based on the camping episode. For a bit of trivia, a Nickelodeon magazine gave a code for it. This will unlock a clarinet. The code was Cheeks, even though Sandy wasn't in it. I guess it's because the code will really save your cheeks if you use it. So Spongebob Patrick and Squidward's camping trip has turned into a disaster. A sea bear has shown up and they must draw circles in the sand to protect themselves from it. There are also a ton of marshmallows lying around. A stage doesn't end until you collect them all. Gotta save the marshmallows from the bear, I guess. Maybe you're trying not to get voted out to old drama, I don't know. But you have to draw circles with the mouse to protect everyone and collect the marshmallows. Occasionally, items that help fend off sea bears appear, such as sombreros or plates of cheese. I wonder if it's Frigo. You can circle them for bonus points, and it's a very nice tie-in to the episode. But eventually, a sea rhinoceros will appear. Then you must collect your anti-sea rhinoceros undergarments. But you continue to collect stuff and circle people until you survive one night and move on to the next. If someone is encircled in time and the bear or rhino reaches them, they get beaten up and an ambulance drives them away. The circles fade away over time, so you have to be on top of your circling game. And yeah, this one is awesome. I have such a good time whenever I play it. Just like with Hot Sand Hustle, this is one of my favorites by Smashing Ideas. But let's look at another game they made before we take a break from them. This one is especially popular, and I'm sure a lot of people who grew up with Nick.com remember it. Here's Poop Deck Drawdown. You're playing a card game with Spongebob, Patrick, Squidward, and Mr. Krabs on the Flying Dutchman ship. What could go wrong? Oh, no! Hey, where are you going? Ah! It's a mutiny! The game is based on the card game Spoons. The instructions might be a bit hard to understand if you've never played it before. Instead of spoons, you have spatulas in this. I also have to mention how the Flying Dutchman is a surprisingly good host to these guys playing this card game on his ship. Normally he'd try to eat them, but he respects the sacred art of poop deck drawdown. You're given a deck of cards and you must choose one to pass to the person next to you. Then you get a new card with each turn. You're trying to get four that match, either by face or number. Once a player has a matching four, they can grab a spatula. Everyone else has to at the same time or they get electrocuted by a jellyfish. If they get shocked three times, they're out of the match. You try to be the last one standing. 
Also, everyone hates you because they celebrate whenever you get shocked. <laughs> The other players are fast, so it can be hard to grab a spatula quickly enough. Also love the visor, Spongebob. Gotta dress your best for the annual game of spoons. Or... spatulas. And listen to the sounds Spongebob and Patrick make whenever they get shocked. difficult and definitely one you have to try a few times to really get the hang of, but it's really good and a staple in Spongebob's Flash game history, like a Spongebob version of Poker Night at the inventory. But as we can see, Smashing Ideas was really putting their best foot forward this year. But another great company made a splash into Spongebob Flash gaming in 2009. Let's give a big warm welcome to MP Game Studio. They're a pretty big deal and their games were notoriously high quality. They weren't around Nick.com for long, but they made a remarkable impact. This game of theirs is Picture Day Disaster, based on the episode Picture Day. It's Picture Day of SpongeBob's boating school and he has to look his best, but everything wants to ruin his appearance on his way over. It's just like my acne the day before I have to go on camera for something. But SpongeBob's ready for war because he's willing to fight back. You walk along the screen while dodging sauce bombs being thrown by teenagers across the street, but you can throw sauce bombs of your own for points. You can also grab collectibles by doing this, one of which will cause Patrick to run through and trample them. And if you lose, this happens. <laughs> then you see Spongebob covered in blood. Nah, it's just sauce. This is a really good game with a high quality art style and catchy background music. <laughs> So yeah, MP Game Studio made some really good stuff, including this one. But this was still an early year for them. So let's check back in on another big company, because Sarbakken was still releasing their share of games this year. This is Viking Hiking, based on the episode Dear Vikings. In this, you have to climb to the top of Mount Odin to reach the Great Viking Hall. You do this in a very unique way. You click to climb, then drag the mouse to aim, then you launch yourself up the mountain and repeat the process, avoiding obstacles along the way. You're freezing as you go, so you have to hurry up and collect these fiery fish to warm up. If you freeze to death, it shows you in pieces and says, Thor has smashed thee. Spongebob really needs to stop getting on the nerves of ancient gods. While I admit the system in this is very unique and fun in concept, it's harder to get the hang of than you'd think it is. It isn't always clear exactly how much you need to aim yourself before launching, and that can lead to you slamming into the same obstacle repeatedly. I also feel like it needs to be faster. You can't just land and immediately stick your pickaxe back in. You have a brief pause before you can try again. Mentally, I want to go much faster than the game will let me. The game is okay, but maybe it could have used a few touch-ups to make everything go smoother. In a way, it's kind of like a Spongebob version of getting over it. A lot less frustrating, though. If you want frustration, just wait till Bodacross comes out in 2010. But let's keep going with Sarbakken and check out the Halloween specials that came out this year. By now, This Is Pop had released Dastardly Dirty Treats, which we looked at in our Halloween games video. You would play as Spongebob and battle the dirty bubble by throwing candy at him in a bunch of stages. Sarbakken had also previously released Boo or Boom, an especially popular Spongebob take on Bomberman. So let's see how the Halloween spirit was expressed this year. First up, we have Frank and Bob's Quest. This was divided into two parts and starred a Spongebob version of Frankenstein's monster. Though on the title screen, it says Halloween Horror and then Frank and Bob's Quest. So which one is the true title? So basically, the citizens of Bikini Bottom are turning into monsters and everything's going spooky. I hope a certain evil teacher isn't behind this. But now you have to save the day. You've somehow managed the semblance of humanity because you're the only fish that isn't trying to cause chaos. You move through this platformer and throw nails at enemies. You can even collect items and use them in special moves. And whenever you take damage, your bones begin to show. Hey, he very clearly has a skeletal structure. Still don't know why Dr. Louie refused to see him. Now I have to mention that these games are especially difficult. The enemies can be relentless, especially the flying ones, and you have to endure for quite a while. Thankfully, this lightning can sometimes strike and regenerate health. And with every stage you complete, you unlock a new ability that makes the game much easier. But the double jump can be a little too overpowered and allow you to jump over most of the stage. 
But these spiky sushi rolls are the worst because they're really easy to jump into, even with a regular jump. The games aren't very forgiving, so you better not hit too many enemies. The first game ends with a boss fight between you and a mutated Gary, so you better have saved your lives for this. This fight is excessively difficult and goes on for a really long time. If you die, you have to start all over from the very beginning. But when you win, you beat the first part, so I guess they had to make it difficult because it was the only boss fight. But prepare yourself for the second one. It's somehow even harder. The worst segment is this one where you have to jump through sushi hell. It's really hard to find extra lives and one hit from them is all it takes to drain one. This portion of the stage is a game ender for many. But on the flip side, Plankton is the final boss and he's extremely easy. That's because the path to him is painfully difficult and will probably sap your life count dry. I guess Sarbakan had to show some amount of mercy after that. Now these games are unique and very creative with the different character designs, especially the Vampire Plankton. It's also cool to see all the different moves you can learn and how you can use them, but maybe they could have dialed the difficulty back just a little. I'd be okay with it if they weren't so stingy about giving you extra lives. It can verge on being a rage game in some instances, and I don't entirely know if that was the developer's intention. Though I do appreciate the game, and Frank and Bob actually garnered a following of his own, receiving fan games and even an official plushie. So this game was really well liked. Just be willing to give it your absolute best and nothing short of it. But funnily enough, this was the year of Frankenstein on Nickelodeon because Workin' Man made a Frankenstein game of their own. When I last mentioned Frank and Patrick, I mistakenly said it was made by Gonzo Games because it was very similar to their usual art style, but they wouldn't come around until 2011. You just connect gears that match to make them spin together. Frank and Patrick is also up there and you have to elevate him so he can be brought to life. With every level you complete, he goes up another floor. And I do have to mention that this really does not feel like an official game. Working Man can be really weird with some of their releases, as we learned with Tasty Pastry Party, but this really feels more like a strange fan game than an official one. But yeah, all you do is move gears in place. An updated version of this showed Spongebob and Sandy on the side, dressed like Dr. Frankenstein and the Bride of Frankenstein. It's alright, but now we've reached the big one. The big release that this year had been gearing up for. The 10th anniversary of the show was celebrated with Truth or Square, an episode where the main characters reminisced while climbing through air vents to get out of a freezer. Sure enough, with how big of an episode this was, it needed equally big games to celebrate it. Sure, there was the console game, but there was also Sarbakan's party game released for the Nick Arcade also made using the 3D VIA program, which they love to use from time to time. This was Sarbakan's third virtual board game, but unlike the Game of Life or Monopoly, it was an original concept. It was a party game similar to Mario Party where the characters would move through the vents and try to collect memories. Listen to SpongeBob's voiceover as he introduces you to this. SpongeBob SquarePants here! Welcome to Truth or Square! This is the best game in the history of best games! All you have to do is get to the Krusty Krab's anniversary party by flipping tiles to make your way through a maze of air ducts, playing lots of wacky mini games as you collect the most happy moments to win the game! Not to mention, party down at the Krusty Krab! You can choose to play as either Spongebob, Patrick, Sandy, or Squidward, even having a multiplayer mode, then you're thrown into it. You get cool 3D transitions through the vents, too. You can determine the difficulty, or rather, how many memories you need to collect, then you spin a wheel to get the number of steps you can move. Most of the board is invisible, so you have to flip tiles and unveil more of it as you proceed. This will also raise your happiness, which you need to keep an eye on. You can also raise happiness by playing mini-games, most of which just require you to mash buttons. Why do you need happiness, you ask? Well, for one, you can buy stuff with it. This can either provide obstacles for other players, or make the game easier on yourself. I said it best in my previous video. They say money can't buy happiness, but in this game, happiness is money. So make of that what you will. Now this game is a lot of fun, and there are so many details to appreciate. All of the obstacles are clever, and the animations are nice to see. You can even have a bit of fun by spinning the wheel a little too much to make it shake the whole screen. But above everything else, this is a strategy game where you have to think your way to victory. Also, if you want to keep your friendships intact, I don't recommend playing with other people. You can be a real jerk to the other players. And some of the minigames can be really hard to understand or get a grasp on. Once you figure them out though, you can do them endlessly. Except for this tug of war one, it's awful. If you're playing with NPCs, you have to rely on them as your teammates and they won't stop messing up. But if you really want a teammate, this game has a team mode where you play in pairs and face off against each other. But once again, your partner is highly incompetent. 
But for the most part, this is a really good adaptation, and you can tell a lot of passion went into it. A truly impressive game to mark SpongeBob's 10th anniversary. But Sarbakken wasn't finished just yet. They made another, much smaller adaptation of Truth or Square for Nickelodeon's website. Like in the episode, Spongebob, Patrick, Squidward, and Mr. Krabs are in the freezer and slowly being frozen. However, their memories can unfreeze them. So you have a puzzle where all the pieces are slowly moving and you have to click them at just the right time to lock them in place. You move further through the vents as you go, and don't hit the wrong pieces or they freeze in place for a short time. And you have to finish the puzzles before the characters freeze. Very simple, but very good. But you know another game that came out this year that was also about being stuck in a freezer? And ironically, it had nothing to do with Truth or Square. This was Workin' Man's Deep Freeze Freakout. Whoa, chill out, Plankton. What are you doing there? He's like me whenever I stim. So you choose to play as either Spongebob or Plankton, then you run on a shelf while the other character throws food at you. You have to try and bounce it back to hit them. Then you can get an ice cube and throw it at them. Look at Spongebob's face. In the other segment of this game, you jump from shelf to shelf while avoiding food thrown by the other character. This game is very fast-paced, so get ready to keep up with everything that gets thrown at you. Literally. I like it. But since we're on the topic of Frozen stuff, I think it's appropriate to close out with a few Christmas specials. Festive games were always nice to see around the holiday season. Such as Serbakken's Naughty or Nice, a game where you throw presents down at fish that are climbing a giant bag of gifts, switching between Naughty and Nice presents for different fish. Apparently the stars from Dora made an appearance in this. But let's look at the ones made by Smashing Ideas. This is Merry Mayhem. At the start of it, we're given a trailer for a new crossover fighting game called Jingle Brawl. This MP Game Studio game would be the start of the legendary Super Brawl series. This Deep Freeze Freakout and the anniversary game Sub-Zero Hero had advertisements for it. Everyone on Nick.com wanted you to play it. I have a separate series where I look at the Super Brawl games if you want to check that out. But for now, let's continue with this Christmas adventure. We get an intro where Plankton sends robot carolers to invade the Krusty Krab. You then go to the top of the restaurant to throw snowballs at them. They provide the background music for us. I hope you enjoy Christmas carols, because you get to listen to that for a while. You also have a noise meter that goes up whenever they reach the Krusty Krab, so I assume their caroling is creating a disturbance. The game is long and very easy, but it's a lot of fun to destroy these singing robots. And once you get the reef blower and can rapidly fire, it's all over for them. You can also sting them with jellyfish and take them all out with a blizzard. There are so many ways to destroy these hunks of junk. This is great. If you ever feel angry, just play this game and take it all out on these robot carolers. But this wasn't the last we saw of the singing robots. In Frosty Fling, they're after Spongebob who's ice skating away. But it isn't quite that simple. You skate from one fish to another, spin with them, then they send you flying into the next one. Ones like Larry can launch you pretty far. But you have to avoid obstacles and keep yourself moving. If you lose, you have to join the choir. Nothing worse than being indoctrinated into a group of Christmas carolers. But again, this one's a lot of fun. Smashing Ideas really came out on top as the MVP this year. Well, outside of the anniversary games. But that's gonna do it for the 2009 library. In terms of game releases, thanks to the anniversary ones, this was the biggest year on Nick.com at the time. Not only did we get a lot of Spongebob games, but a lot of them were really high quality and still hold up today. It's so nice to relive these and admire the creations of Smashing Ideas, Sarbakken, Workin' Man, MP Game Studio, and everyone else. These games serve as a reminder of how much fun it used to be to go on Nick.com and mess around in short little adventures based on your favorite shows. As the 2000s ended and Spongebob entered the 2010s, both the show and the Flash games based on it would go through many changes. But good ones continued to come out, and I look forward to giving them a try. I hope you're just as excited for them as I am. We still have a lot to get through. Not quite as many as the Frigo games, but you get the point. Hope you all continue to watch as we keep going through Spongebob Flash game history. Thank you for joining me. I will see you in the next memory.